Welcome back to the channels Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluders, Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud, available on Amazon. In this part, we will keep the reading of the Chapter 6, a reminder of the future, games, books, and digital life. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Let's go! And he raged with the interviewer, as if he had some fault for limiting his students. Well, the point is that neither that interview nor the way he was treating his students got along very well. The university decided to push him away, and finally he resigned. He said he would seek to teach on the foundations of education to save a little of future generations. The problem is that when you fall that way, the credibility of a teacher is also put into question. At first, no school accepted him as a teacher. Those were difficult years. Fortunately, he could know all this because he himself left a record of the period on the blog of a distance course that he began to offer. Maybe his last resort to continue teaching. He mentions wistfully that at that time he was also left by his wife, who could not cope with the decline in their standard of living, all because of a deep-rooted opinion that he could not pass up and move on. I was a little sad for Professor Mello. He lost a lot, and I kept thinking, was he after all right about us young people? Were we even less creative and so reliant on digital technology that we could not do anything without it? After all, the internet was central to our lives. We were all cluders for one reason. We were born into digital culture. Every aspect of our lives was in computers in the cloud. What could there still be outside beyond the cloud? I watched the corner of the screen and saw that the exploration app that I and Leandro installed were blinking again. This indicated that he had completed another sweep in the cloud and had found more access to my digital life. I clicked on the icon and rolled the access report. Nothing abnormal in the first few hits until the name of Professor Mello began to appear again. This time I was scared by the fact that the dates of the accesses and views date back to a long time before all this started, from my first blog posts, when I still did not even know what to write about, and followed only a fashion of the time, to have a blog. It was as if he were just waiting for me to start surfacing in the cloud to start a continuous surveillance process. On my blog, it suddenly beeped the warning that there was a new comment. When I opened its window, there it was written, Does anyone observe the observer? I opened my eyes again, for it was very strange and very coincidental. I was sure at that moment that Professor Mello knew that I was scouring his life. And, of course, in front of the comment on the blog, I was also sure that he already knew that I was finally aware of his surveillance of my digital life since my 12 years of age. Note, I turned everything off and ran to tell my mother. This time I was very scared, for there were no voices or anonymous messages, no doubts about possible messages from the future. It was an older man watching over my life in the digital cloud for a long time then. Something very scary even today. Stories of abuses and horrors against teenagers on the internet appear all the time. For the next two days, I didn't access the internet. I turned off the Wi-Fi from both my computer and my cell phone. I admit that I felt totally lost, for much of my life was linked to the cloud. Some schoolmates called me. They found strange my absence in the digital world. Without blog posts, even Marcos came to me to find out what was going on. I said it was nothing, because I didn't want anyone else knowing about that madness about Professor Mello. Little did I know that madness would spread in any way for the lives of us all. Leandro knew everything, because I told him, and the next day he stayed with me fairly. I was frightened. My mother was also afraid for my safety, and my father said he would take action against this shameless lord. Leandro and I even laughed after these supposed arrangements of my father for we well knew how difficult it was to transform what Professor Mello apparently was doing in a crime. After all, what he had in fact done was to follow my publications from the beginning. There was no way to know about the invasion of the blog access. And the scary comments also did not indicate anything other than the fact that he evidently knew that I was researching about him, probably using the same app one used to know who was accessing my digital life. It was the nature of the cloud, that is kind of a complex and chaotic journey in search for any truth. We took the two days out of the cloud to build new effective bonds. Leandro moved closer to my mother. 
He kept praising her and saying that I had to inherit beauty. Funny that he did not usually compliment me very directly, but kept saying these things to my parents and friends in my presence. At first I thought it was strange, as if he was avoiding me or even embarrassing me, but then I understood that he wanted everyone to see me as he did. On the second day, we enjoyed that we were still on school holidays to visit some points of the city, a museum, a park, and, of course, the mall. It was strange to go hand in hand with Leandro for a museum. It was kind of out of our cluder culture, no touch screens or virtual access to anything. They were real corridors with pictures and sculptures. He missed using his cell phone to see if there was any element of augmented reality present in the environment. Leandro had his, but he avoided using. We enjoyed the moments and each other without any digital interference. In the park, we walked a lot. We were barefoot and lay in the grass to talk and enjoy the summer breeze and sun. We ate popcorn and drank fruit juice. We played frisbee with some other teenagers who were there too. It was fun to do things without using digital technology, at least for me, because there was always someone who stopped playing to see something or answer the cell phone. Today would be the fever of instant messaging apps that dominate smartphones, but at that time they were still the messages in SMS and social networks from the World Wide Web. Fashions change, but the principles are the same. You interact more with those who are away through the cell phone than with those who are physically closer. In this same park, we met some groups of young people practicing RPG games with cosplay. RPG is the acronym for role-playing game, that is, role-playing game in English, and cosplay is the union of the words costume play, play, or act in a costume. These people basically simulate adventures with narratives in different universes and play according to situations, interpreting their characters to the fullest. It was cool to watch medieval sword fights within wars and simulated battles within the imagination of that costume staff. Or enjoy comic book and movie characters by participating in simulated conversations and melee fights. It was a great joke, but seriously interpreted by the participants. And bad luck to anyone who tried to take them out of their characters during the game would suffer very intense hostilities. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Continuing to support the channel's Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.